Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to another episode, not from our Work Care for Beginner series, but from our Myth or Truth series. We are on episode seven. Time flies, right? Well, today we are going to myth some busts. <laughs> today we are going to bust some myths or maybe find some actual truths and in the end learn more about what our beautiful orchids really actually want from us. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Stay tuned to find out how you can get one month completely free. All right, so before we begin, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I post all types of plant content on a weekly basis, right? I have your comments on my phone, so let's see what you guys left in the comment section. Let's see what myths you guys heard recently. All right, here's a good one from a member, Double Plants. Orchids need to be in high humidity environments, so every day spray them with water. Now, we did talk about misting in myth or truth number two, but this is a little bit of a different question because it's a double myth. Because we're not talking only about misting our orchids, which is a myth, but also orchids need high humidity, which is another myth. Yay! No, you actually do not need high humidity for orchids. P.S. This is the best mister that I have because it's automated. It doesn't have water, but you just press the button and it spritz water. I use this in terrariums, by the way. Getting back to our myth. No, orchids don't need high humidity. If they find themselves in a higher humidity environment, they're not gonna say no to it. But the vast majority of orchids offered for sale and the ones that you usually find in flower shops are selected and hybridized by people because they are very, very tolerant to house conditions. And one of those conditions is low humidity. If you just love Phalaenopsis and you've always seen it in flower shops and you really wanna buy it, but you're afraid, that you heard these orchids need high humidity and you live in the desert, don't worry about it. Go for it, purchase that orchid. I promise you, it does not require high humidity. It is true that in drier and warmer conditions, your orchids will require probably more frequent watering because they will transpire more. And that is the thing with high humidity. The higher the humidity, the less the transpiration rate is as well. Obviously, if you let an orchid be unwatered, it will transpire so much water that it will dehydrate. Hence why the myth of water your orchid every seven days is a very, very big and dangerous no-no. If you live in a very dry environment, water your orchid whenever it's dry. It can dry out in two days. Water it in two days. Combining myths is never a good idea. But I can assure you 100% that the vast majority of orchids that you see on my channel for the past eight years or so, and the ones you see around me, they're all grown in very typical household conditions. More so in the summertime, I have very, very, very dry conditions and everybody's okay. The secret is to keep them hydrated and also ventilated at the same time. Orchids love air. They love water as well, but both of them at the same time. It is very true that there are exceptions. Exceptions exist in any field, but the exception is not the rule. The vast majority of orchids can absolutely withstand normal to pretty dry home environments. But the most common exception in the flower shop is the Miltoniopsis orchid, which is the one that I'm showing you here. I myself do struggle a little bit with it because I have a warm, dry environment, but these orchids actually can do very, very good if you live in more of a cooler or more humid environment. Here in Europe, these types of orchids, I feel like are very, very popular in the Northern territories, Scandinavian territories, maybe UK territories, because that environment is a little bit more suited for them. Their ancestors come from cloud forests where temperatures never reach very, very high limits since it is a high elevation. And also, I think the name suggests it, cloud forests refer to very foggy environments, very humid environments. So obviously, for somebody like us in a tropical or subtropical climate, this will be a challenge in home conditions. But for somebody living further up to the poles, it might not be such a challenge. But again, this is the only very popular exception. There are other exceptions, but they're not necessarily at the flower shops. So overall, don't worry about the humidity aspect with orchids. I know when I started this hobby, I was trying to put humidity trays, humidifiers, all of those fun stuff. If you go back to my videos in 2013, you'll see them. You'll see how I was just desperately trying to increase humidity 
and it became a burden and over the years i just cut it away from my life and guess what my orchids are still flourishing so don't worry about that and about the misting situation i would not do that in a home environment i discussed at length about it in the second myth or truth i'll link you to it and the timestamp when i talk about it down below in the description Alrighty, here's one. It is a question, so I'm gonna put it in the statement format. Derek says, fragrant orchids attract ants. That is a myth. Now, first off, if you didn't know orchids are fragrant, oh yes, they are some of the most fragrant flowers you've ever met. I'm not talking about the flower shop phalaenopsis. Those are typically not fragrant at all, but there are a bundle of other orchid species that you can find in orchid nurseries, which are highly, highly fragrant. One of them is the Cattleya orchid and its relatives, which is the beauty that I'm holding here, does not fit in the frame. <laughs> so I'm gonna hold it in my lap. Now you would think that the scent which can sometimes be sweet, will attract ants. And the answer is no. It will attract bees, it will attract butterflies and other pollinating insects that really do like that scent. Some cattleyas or other orchids can smell like roses. So whatever pollinates roses will be attracted to that smell as well. But orchids, generally speaking, can actually attract ants because they produce sap. They actually ooze sweet sap. I'm gonna give you a close-up on my orchid. You will see at the back of the flowers, there are some droplets of sap. This is actually food that the orchid produces for itself. And with this source of energy, which is actually sugar, it feeds new structures. And it does so more vigorously with the structures that are just growing. And you will see it on the sheaths of the new growths, on the underside of the leaves, and also flower spikes. They are structures that need a lot of energy. And as the orchid pushes out those buds, it pushes energy to them. And sometimes through the pores, of the epidermis of the plant, that sap will start to ooze. Now that is sugars. And one thing ants like are sugars. So yes, if you have an ant problem, orchids that produce a lot of this sap can actually attract ants. It happens to me pretty much all the time. The ants are pretty harmless for the orchid. They just feed on that sap and then they go away. The orchid will produce more sap, so they will come back. One thing though that happens depending on the species of ants is that they can protect mealybugs. Majority of the times they will not actually feed on the plant unless you have cutter ants. I don't have them here, I don't know how they act, but pretty much ants themselves are harmless. If you don't like ants, that's a little bit of a problem. Yeah, I can see how having ants coming on your table and in your house, a bit of a problem. What you can do is place your orchid on a dish of water. Do not sit the actual roots of the orchid in water, so not the interior pot. If you have your orchid in a decorative pot, you can sit this one in water. You're creating a barrier for the ants, so even if an ant goes by to investigate, she will not actually reach the sap, so she will not send those signals, those pheromones <laughs> to the other ants to come and gather the sap. So until you solve your ant problem, just keep your orchid like that. Do not put pebbles with water. It has to be water. Ants can walk on wet pebbles. They cannot really walk on water. They, they flow, but they'd rather not. Anyway, long story short, that's how I would deal with it until you actually deal with the infestation of ants in your home. If you grow your orchids outside and you see ants on them, pretty normal, it's gonna happen. Usually nothing bad will happen. Just keep an eye out for the mealybugs. Now, one thing that is not a myth is today's sponsor, Skillshare. Most of you probably already know that Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of creative and inspiring classes for people who love to learn every day. This is the place where you can explore, expand on and learn new things like drawing, painting, design, photography and much much more. In the past year of using Skillshare myself, I managed to learn quite a great deal about painting, which has always been something I loved but struggled with about the process of creating videos, about finding my own style and actually being able to put on video what's in my mind. And that's not easy, trust me. There are so many videos on so many subjects, I really just want to have more hours in a day to be able to watch them all. Many of the times I get inspired by things I thought would never interest me, but now they do. All classes are premium, have no ads and new content is added all the time. If you'd like to try Skillshare yourself, 
visit the link below and the first 1000 of you will get a completely free one month trial to the premium membership. So check it out at the link in the description. I hope you'll enjoy it. And in the end, I thank you all for supporting the people who support my channel. Next, myths. Oh boy, oh boy, these are some good ones that I personally didn't hear before. All right, so Emaf says that in the Philippines, some old folks used to water their orchids with a mix of this word. I cannot say it, YouTube doesn't like it when I say it. Said it makes them grow faster and bloom better because it has ammonia. Okay, <laughs> um, listen. I'm not gonna say myth or truth on this particular one. There is something behind it. It's just not something you should do. <laughs> Here's the thing. Yes, that does contain ammonia. Ammonia is also contained in fertilizers. It is one of the simplest natural organic quote unquote fertilizer that you can have for plants. And yes, in nature, that's how it works. The animal eliminates things and they get transformed. They go through the nitrogen cycle and they transform into stuff that plants can pick up. Some plants can actually pick up that ammonia as it is. I'm not entirely sure which of these plants, but yeah, that's pretty much how it works. So the idea behind it, that's how it works. Is it gross? Yeah, it is gross. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Is it going to work in your living room? No, because it's gonna stink. But most importantly, no, because these orchids do not grow in soils or in environments where the breaking down of the nitrogen is efficient. They grow in pretty quote unquote sterile conditions. We have here a bunch of moss, a bunch of bark, not too many bacteria and microbes and microorganisms and little insects and all of those things that keep the balance good in nature. So will it actually work efficiently with a living room kid no i personally don't believe it will but yeah naturally speaking that's how it happens that that's one of the sources where you will find nitrogen it's not the only source obviously there are more but it is a very important conversion of the nitrogen into things that plants can pick up so the idea was there but obviously you know it's an old thing that people would do and you know if you grow your orchid outside it will get eat on <laughs> by animals maybe by humans as well you know, it, it's a thing. I, I Just don't do it. it. Just don't. And the second myth from Emaf, oh boy. <laughs> if it's a big no-no to touch orchids if you're on your period because it will cause them to wither off and die. <laughs> Obviously, that's just a, an old fairy tale, sadly. Uh, because there are many cultures, mine included, that have some sort of fairy tales like this about women and people generally who have a period. Um, and I think it is time to move on from them because it is that type of a fairy tale that is damaging. It's not fun. It really isn't. So obviously that is a myth. My viewer absolutely knows it is a myth. They were saying it was a myth. Uh, just sharing some of the let's say sayings from their culture many cultures have sayings regarding this you know but it is a very 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 natural process that some other mammals have as well it's absolutely fine obviously you can touch your orchids you can do whatever um but it's one of those things that for me is sad because it really really damages more than anything else it's just a fairy tale it's just a myth but back to our orchids obviously you can you can actually even touch your orchids no matter whenever you can touch the flowers you're not gonna make them fade faster that's another myth you can touch the leaves you can touch your orchid whenever as long as you don't break it the orchids will absolutely not mind and one of the best things about this hobby is to hug my orchids i don't know i like to hug my orchids do you guys like to hug your orchids i kind of do it's weird but it makes me feel good and it makes this hobby a little bit more enjoyable because my orchids are my babies in a way i take care of them and i make sure they're all right so i'm attached to them emotionally and i want them to be healthy and happy so yeah it's a good thing to hold your orchid you're not gonna damage it look for piss make sure you don't have all sorts of ailments affecting your orchids you know how they say orchids thrive on neglect no let's change that you guys let's say that orchids thrive on attention because for the past eight years and a half that's what i gave to my orchids attention and look how pretty they are i think they enjoy it next up sandeep is saying vandas don't need to be watered myth or truth obviously a myth 
there is no plant that does not need to be watered in a way or another. Now, obviously, of course, if you can grow your Vanda orchids in your garden and you have rain and dew and all of that fun stuff, you might not actively have to water it. You're so lucky. I envy you so much. If you live in the same, let's say, natural habitat as the Vanda orchid, you can have all the Vandas in the world and not having to worry to water them. That's the life. But obviously, for the rest of us who need to water plants, yes, Vandas absolutely need to be watered. They need to obtain their water from a source, whether you provide that water or not. Let me check a little bit my Vanda. Oh, look, look at the pretty roots. They have started to grow. I recently repotted this one and I wasn't sure if she was gonna do well, but she is. And she is also producing a flower spike. So yes, all orchids that grow in your living room need to be watered in one way or another, whether you're running water through the pot or you're submerging the pot, you're soaking them if you have mounds, soaking the mounds and so on and so forth. Water needs to come in contact with the root system. No orchid can thrive without any type of water. None that we can grow in our living rooms in any way. And the last one for today comes from Melissa. Orchids can live a hundred years. And well, that is true. How about that? Melissa is also asking what is the longevity, the let's say general longevity of an orchid. It is pretty undeterminable. And yes, these specimens, they do have a limited life. Again, I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if there is an answer to that. Some orchids in cultivation are very, very, very old indeed. But it makes sense that at some point they will just wither off, at least some of them. However, the good thing about orchids is that they do reproduce. And I'm not talking about seeds here, but actually cloning themselves. So for example, a Phalaenopsis orchid produces cakeys. That is an offshoot, which is identical to the mother plant, which will continue the life of the plant. So even if the mother plant dies in a hundred years or something, there will be the keiki, which lives on with the same genetic information, pretty much being a sort of a copy of the mother plant as much as possible. With sympodials, things are even better. Some sympodials do actually produce keikis, such as dendrobiums, so they can prolong their life through keikis. But not only that, since these guys have a rhizome which continuously grows and produces new growth, you can always have the older part of the orchid just wither off within a few years, but having the newer part just continuing to grow again indefinitely because it's always, always new and fresh. So again, I really don't know if there is such a thing as an average lifespan for a Cattleya orchid, for example. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Maybe it can actually live forever because it always regenerates itself which is super fun. So rest assured that these guys live a very, very, very long time. Don't worry about it. And if the actual plant doesn't, a division of it or a cake or a plantlet of it certainly will. So that is it for today. Stay tuned though, in a week or two, we're gonna have yet another myth or truth, but it's gonna be a special edition for the end of the year, the biggest misinformations and myths and lies about orchids that are out there. And I think I'm gonna take each particular genus and tell you about the biggest stuff that I heard along the years about them, which is obviously not true. We're not gonna have truth, we're only gonna have myths. So stay tuned for that. As for today, I think we are good. Of course, you are always welcome to leave me down below in the comment section myths for me to debunk or to talk about, or maybe truths that you heard. Just leave me ideas down below and I might include them in future videos. Alrighty then, so thank you so, so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video and you have a great day. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring yet another episode from the series. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates, and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye!